True Grit, High Noon, Django Unchained. Western movies and novels have been around for years, and they'll continue to exist far into the future. But what if the Wild West was more tame and peaceful than we've grown to love? One small town in the 1870s decided to change that. Palisade, Nevada, the toughest, most violent town in the Wild West. With the stories of frequent killings, heists, and destruction, it quickly built up a reputation with the papers across the country. In today's video, we will look at the full story of Palisade and the way in which it shaped the way we view the Wild West today. In 1869, Palisade became one of the many stops on the Transcontinental Railroad. With the town becoming much more popular and a thirst for tourism and profits, they planned one of the biggest hoaxes in history. It consisted of using violence and destruction to bring a reputation to Palisade, one which went much too far. Upon arrival of a train, the residents would stage gunfights and robberies, creating a spectacle for the passengers to become engrossed with. Nobody was in on the hoax, except for the townspeople, and they were very careful to keep it that way. The truth about Palisade, however, was quite the opposite. Crime was in fact so low that there was no need for a sheriff. The town was busy with trade from the mines and cattle, and this has led historians to speculate as to exactly why the locals decided to create the elaborate hoax. Some speculate that due to the novels of the time describing the West as a gunslinging violent place, tourists and travellers were disappointed to actually discover it was really just as quiet and even less crime riddled than the cities back east. According to these theories, the townspeople discussed the idea of reinventing the town and giving the easterners what they wanted. An article published by Karen Hill in 2012 stated that, they recruited members of the community, the railroad workers, and even a local Indian tribe to join in. Around a thousand fake crimes were crafted in Palisade. They shot blanks and used blood from the local slaughterhouse to further increase the realism. The crimes that occurred tended to happen when the Overland Limited was in town. This would usually stop for a long time, allowing passengers to rest up and resupply for their journey to Chicago or San Francisco. The townspeople waited for the train to be empty and then create a frenzy of violence and destruction. Tourists were forced to flee and hide for their lives, fearing for their own safety. Nobody ever thought to fact check that all casualties seemed to be locals, and they also never questioned the miraculous recovery of the victims, who seemed to be in the saloon within half an hour laughing and drinking away. The townspeople apparently played jokes on who would play the victim. It isn't clear what exactly was traded with the Shoshone tribe, but even they joined in and were more than enthusiastic when it came to playing their role. As the 1870s progressed and the railway line was fully completed, the violence died down and life continued as normal. It wasn't until much later that we would discover the truth behind the toughest town in the West. So now that's over, we're just going to take a few minutes to discuss the knock-on effect this had on the world we live in today. I was always taught by my history teacher that you should always look at the effects of what happened, the cause and effect of the situation in history and how it's shaped the world we're in. As far as we can tell, Palisade was the only settlement in the West. There may have been more that actually truly lived up to the way that we view the Wild West today. The effects of this hoax were just massive. Um, I mean, a whole genre of film has come out of it. Media has been massive around Wild West. It's just a massive, massive genre that will be covered and will always continue to be covered, like I said at the start of the video. It's pretty crazy to me that this all came from a hoax. A small group of people decided to boost some tourism and uh, give the people what they wanted. We know now that the West was a place of, uh, it was typical, you know, of anywhere else in America, pretty much anywhere else in the civil, uh, civilized world. Um, it's pretty crazy that it was quite quiet and calm. And in fact, the cities back east were usually uh, more crime ridden due to the fact that the banks had more money and it was, it was more worthy to rob somewhere there than it was uh, out in the West. Stories like this, though, are why I love history so much. An idea from a single group of people shaped the entire way we view a time period. The American West and uh, the colonization of it is huge because it led to so many different things. For instance, the Native Americans being pushed out, the Civil Wars, um, the Declaration of Independence. It's so many different things came from this, and the way we look back on it is actually completely wrong. It's like, it is the same with pirates and things like that, uh, so it sh we shouldn't be too surprised, but the outlaws and the heroes and the cowboys and the gunslingers, you know, they weren't necessarily real or how we know them to be. Obviously, it's naive to say that they didn't exist whatsoever, because of course they did. They do in every single time period. There's crime and there's murder and there's death, in, and it's all around us, it always is. Very depressing. But anyway, history is always fascinating to me because you can perceive it in so many different ways. It's up to you to complete it. It's never, ever going to be complete. We will never fully find out how people lived because not every single person had written down and documented for us exactly what happened, and that's the beauty of it. But anyway, thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and be sure to suggest some future topics uh, in the comments I butchered that then and uh, make sure that you could suggest some more for me I don't want to cover uh, the normal stuff such as the Titanic you know World War 2 I'm fine doing war stories from these situations like um, 
Vasily Zaitsev and, you know, Wojciech the Bear and things like that. If you want to hear about those, just let me know down in the comments. Obviously, if you could take the time to uh, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. If you're new around here, I'd really, really appreciate it. But thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Goodbye.